One of the reasons yeah. I think Trump has always been extraordinarily successful is because he is exactly who he is. And yes. um, he's worn the exact same thing for the last 10 years. Um, in fact, as much be much longer than that. Um, he wears his Navy suit, oh, his red uniform. tie and yeah. his white shirt. Um, politicians um, uh, try to tell a story with the costume they dress up True. in. Uh, Mr. John Fetterman is trying to tell a very particular story with the costume he dresses up in. Um, how deep does your rage against John Fetterman go? Yeah, I really do hate John Fetterman. Uh, the thing is about John Fetterman is he is just the worst of the pl new play actors mm -hmm. in Washington. He's a rich kid who's trying to pretend that he's working mm -hmm. class. He is a guy who talks big, but behind the scenes is doing nothing. He's a complete emotional narcissist. And I think that's actually the best way to understand him. He puts his comfort before his constituents. He puts his comfort and his like, you know, faux patina over over respect for the overall institution. And what really pissed me off is, uh, you know, immediately after he got back from the hospital for his two month, you know, long stay about depression, he immediately attacked J.D. Vance, saying that he, J.D. cared more about like messaging instead of a railway safety bill. And I know that Fetterman was literally in the hospital whenever his staff signed on his behalf, co-signed the railway safety bill legislation and Vance and Sherrod Brown and all the offices were doing all of the legwork behind that. And that's when I was like, oh, this guy is a fake. He's fake. You know, he's just one of those people who he loves the camera. He loves the attention. He loves, you know, this fake, um, this like fake picture that he's tried to create around himself a fool enough people into thinking it when it's really just all about him. And all politicians, by the way, who dress out of code, what they are doing is putting their comfort their individualism over service to their constituents like they don't do it to relate to you they do it because they think they're better than you and that's why when they changed the senate uh, dress code rules temporarily he was the only one allowed to dress that way and the staff and the pages and all those other people were still required to wear a suit a tie slacks and all those other things on the senate floor that was the perfect example because that's what i've always tried to emphasize when people in positions of immense power dress like slobs or dress out of uh, what is expected of them, they do it because they can. Think, okay, who are the first people to first buck the codes? It was the tech people. And the tech people did it in a way to say, screw you to Wall Street. It, it's an act of rebellion against the overall institution. In their case, whatever, okay, we're talking about business. Although I do think a lot of them should dress better. Uh, but in the case of politicians, he is saying, I am more, my comfort and my uh, chosen aesthetic is more important than the institution of the United States Senate and the history that precedes this chamber. And that is just the height of narcissism. It's not just him, just so we're clear. Uh, Kristen Cinema is also a major, but there's a lot of Republicans who walk around looking like schlubs too. A lot of these people do not take their position seriously and that's it really bothers me uh, when they do that. So the classic response that yeah. people have whenever uh, people say that you should be dressing better or dressing mm. more formally to say, well, fashion changes all the time. You're not wearing tails wandering yeah. around Washington, D.C. Where right. is your, you know, trench coat or, you know, uh, your 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 fake wig or whatever? Mm. What's your response to that? I mean, uh, are we just past the era of formality where the suit mattered? I mean, I like them. <laughs> I've been wearing well, them since okay. I was a kid. But the like history of the suit itself is an egalitarian garment. It was yeah. evolved in London and in British society as workwear that both the gentleman and the everyday mm -hmm. man could wear and is a sign of an egalitarian society and that's why you know even with suits today you know we're fundamentally you and i are wearing the same garment but there are a couple of things that you know can distinguish and even what distinguishes a good suit from a bad suit is really only mostly available in terms of immediately like eye catching to let's say like one percent of the population mm -hmm. so that's my whole point is that the garment was designed both egalitarian it's also designed to make you look better you look like shit when you're walking around in a hoodie guess what even when you're fat and gross and misshapen like john fetterman you look better <laughs> when you are in a suit yeah. you look more like the ogre that you are when you are not wearing a suit all politicians are like this if you've got a gut you should be wearing a suit and tie you know why because the entire point of the suit the garment and all of the rules around it are evolved to emulate one of the most fundamental rules of great fashion which is that it should draw attention to the face and it should prioritize your best features which are up here and not usually down here 
That's why only muscle men and all those look better in a t-shirt than they do in a suit. The uh, odds are you are probably not that person. And yet I still see Republican politicians walking around in it's Miller time t-shirts on <laughs> Capitol Hill. And I'm like, you're not cool, dude. You just look like a fat loser. Like, what, do you want, and that's, that's the other thing. Everyone's like, oh, Sagar is such an elitist. I'm like, I actually think it is deeply, it is ridiculous to say that people who are our elected representatives, who are by definition the elite of the country, should, how is it elitist to say they should dress well? Mm -hmm. If you're walking around and you're having trouble mm -hmm. uh, making ends meet, God bless you. I got nothing but love for you. Wear whatever you want. I, you got much bigger problems than what you're wearing and all that. I wish you nothing but the best. But these people are multimillionaires. They barely work. They come to Washington three days a week and they mostly don't do shit and like nothing. They can afford to abide by the traditions that just keep us um, in a situation where we understand that they work for us. And the more that they become quote unquote individuals, they work for themselves even more so than they already do. Mm -hmm. So it's not a sign of respect to you or trying to relate to you. They think they're better than you. Well, it's also yeah. a sleight of hand, right? Because yeah. if they are identifiably elites through dressing right. well or what have you, then there are responsibilities exactly. that come with that and accountability yes. that's supposed to come with that. But golly gee, I'm just running around in my hoodie. Uh -huh. I'm just like you. No, you're not. Yeah, you're not, though. <laughs> you have yeah. a lot more power than almost any other person How in the country. How many people live in Pennsylvania? 30 million? 30 million people depend on you, dude. Yeah. It's not a joke. You know, it's not supposed to be. It's mm -hmm. not fun and games here. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the dress code. I think about this for all the politicians. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of them. Some of these people, good Lord. Uh, if you see these people out in the wild, it's not pretty. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, okay, uh, whenever you talk about this on, on breaking points, you're usually uh, having to sort of defend yourself in your interest for mm -hmm. this. Um, nerd out, like, what's the stuff that, that you really care about in suits, in ties, in dress, uh, in menswear um, that to you, like, makes it enjoyable? Because it's become a hobby for you. It's not well, just okay, okay. a way Here's of dressing. Here's the other thing, right, is that I, listen, I like suits, don't get me wrong. But I don't wear them all. Well, actually, when in my off life, I don't really wear suits. Um, I think I last time I saw you, you were in a hoodie. <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, I probably wouldn't wear a hoodie anymore now at this point, but that gets to the point yeah. of I don't always wear a suit. I wear it when I'm here. I wear it whenever I do appearances. And I specifically wear it when I do my show because I believe that I have a great responsibility to people to present myself in the best possible light in order to help them get the news that they deserve in the time that they need and also to be able to share it with anyone that they want in order to make sure that I present the best picture. So that is why I wear the suit, I wear the tie, I care about how I look, I care about my hair. There's no nobility in looking bad. You're doing a great service to others whenever you put care into your appearance. Now, I have also come to like it, but it's not. I didn't always mm -hmm. go that way. I wasn't really into you know i had way more important things to worry about whenever i was a white house correspondent or whatever but at that time i still insisted always have to wear a suit i never set foot in the oval office with sneakers or with any other uh, uh with, with any other footwear i always had a suit i think at one point I even at a tie bar uh whenever i was walking in there and it's because i have immense respect for the institution for the room, it's, it wasn't about Trump. To me, it's about history. It's about respect for everybody mm. who's ever been inside. And if you don't have that respect, that, by the way, you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, but realistically, you know, from that point, yes, I have come to uh, enjoy some of it. But I just want to make it clear that I don't do it just because I like it. In fact, yeah. the like came much, much later yeah. than the actual response. I think the first thing that you yeah. had that was like the tell was like the ties. Like you specifically liked those bonobos floral yeah. ties. Yeah, but you know why I wore first... those? Just because they look good on camera yeah. and because people enjoyed them. It's yeah. not because I liked it. I was yeah. like, yeah, all right. You know, yeah. people get makes people go crazy. All right, I'll wear yeah. the floral ties. Yeah. Uh, I started wearing those. I don't wear them as much. I uh, mostly wear silk ties that I buy on eBay. Uh, just because they well, they last like old eight, ones, old ones, yeah, yeah, like 40, 50 years old because they last a really long time. It's great. Like I just said, they're like 40, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Nobody can even tell. Ties hold up great. And a designer tie that paying full price is outrageous, but people on eBay will sell them in tie lots of like 40. So I'm like, great, good to go. Yeah. Now I've got 40 new ties. It's like there's like six Hermes ties in there. You yeah, paid like exactly. three bucks for Bingo. it. Great, awesome. That's <laughs> what I do. Uh, in terms of the knots, I've been playing around recently. I tied a full Windsor for a little while, which I still maintain it's looks better big. on camera. It's too big. <laughs> so I think you're right in person, um, but on the camera, it's all about symmetry. Yeah. It's all about what people are seeing. The point of wearing any men's, this is another thing people need to understand. I dress 
conservatively whenever it comes to menswear suits and all of that, specifically because if you are watching my show, you should not be distracted. And this actually gets to the whole egalitarian nature yeah. of the suit in the first place. It's like if you're wearing something crazy, you're kind of failing. The, the floral tie was just enough. It's a touch. But, you know, wearing like a double breasted suit or uh, I, I don't know, like I'm tr- there's mul- purple window, yeah, pane. purple window pane, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Or even, you know, this uh, I think I'm wearing a double foreign hand knot right now. This is a tough one to get straight and it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but traditionally, I used to tie the uh, old school prep school not a traditional just foreign hand and it was always crooked and people would always complain because mm-hmm. they're like and i used to think i'm like why do people even mm-hmm. care and i realized it's because it's drawing them out of the story so mm-hmm. i tied the full windsor for a while i have uh, gotten better at tying a more symmetrical double foreign hand knot which i do like um but this is about as crazy as i'm gonna get like sitting in front of you um for the show at least yeah um why do you think people get so touchy when there's a cultural moment where people are implying that maybe you shouldn't look like a giant schlub when you walk around outside if you can afford it. Yeah, uh, I think that it reflects a notion of obligation in an comfort in an age of comfort, narcissism, and individuality. Fundamentally, dressing nicer or dressing to older norms will require sacrifice of comfort. Will require more attention to detail. And that's just not what our culture prioritizes. And so it just cuts against that grain. The technology industry is the worst offender at this. They're like, we don't care what you wear as long as the work product is there. And you know, maybe in that one specific case, that might be true, but I'm still not actually entirely sure that it is. Well, uh, when all these people come to DC, they yeah. still put on their suit and tie. <laughs> exactly. That's right. I, yeah, I always think about it. I'm like, hey, look at Elon. I mean, by the way, Elon does dress terribly, but uh, he still wears a suit. Yeah. He still wears a suit. Yeah. Hey, there's some good pictures of him in white tie. He, he owns um, it. Uh, he did. Yes, that's right. But yeah. yeah, but whenever he's been wearing dress sneakers recently, which is horrible. He also wears all black. Why do black you hate suit. dress sneakers so much? Uh, I just think they look bad. I mean, the white sole is just totally incongruent with the rest. I mean, I just said the entire point of the suit and of a great garment, a great outfit is in order to draw draw and accentuate your best features. If you're wearing as like a Mc- Kevin McCarthy, whenever he went to the uh, Oval Office, or maybe it was McConnell, I forget. He's wearing all black. Black suit. I mean, bright... it was literally all of them other than yeah, Kamala Harris were right. wearing some form of like informal so shoe I think in that Biden picture. Biden was wearing proper shoes. Okay. I do think he was wearing proper yeah. shoes. I'll give it to him. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's wearing what I'm wearing right now, Alan Edmonds, um, which are just easy drivers. Let me throw a shout out. They have stores in like every major city. Yeah. The main thing is, yes, there are better shoe brands, but it's still better to buy something that actually fits you. So yeah. go get properly fitted and yeah. then you can buy it. And then also maybe you can buy it on eBay, whatever, you know, go for it. Uh, more so, I'm just saying, you know, fit is a is a key part of this too. If you do work hard enough, you can get a good pair of dress shoes like what I'm wearing right now, which is not uncomfortable for me at all. Mm-hmm. If you buy a good pair of boots, you can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. But that requires care and it carries a little bit of attention, which is again, a lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah. They want to put their time into something else like video games or yeah. marijuana. 